now we are going to talk about the changes in body fluids volume and osmolarity the changes in body fluid volumes and osmolarity in different clinical situation we will take different clinical situations and we will observe and explain what changes occur in body fluid volumes and their osmolarity let's start with a very simple situation that let's suppose we give a person isotonic saline it's a little reputation but it's worth it suppose this is the normal you remember our basic diagram right and here it is yes plasma what is this interstitial fluid together they are extracellular fluid and here it is intracellular fluid and don't forget your friend what is this red blood cell there right and of course there are proteins also now the first situation i will explain that when normal saline is given to a person right isotonic saline infusion the clinical situation is isotonic saline infusion intravenously of course right so we are adding to this system of this person isotonic saline solution in isotonic saline solution what is the osmolarity of the step number one is we have to understand what happened to extracellular fluid so what is uh, what is the fluid coming osmolarity is 300 what is the osmolarity of normal extracellular fluid 300 what is the osmolarity of normal intracellular fluid 300 so when you are running running intravenously normal saline or isotonic saline now actually in every drop of saline the sodium chloride is present in such an amount that osmolarity of this drop of water of saline and extracellular fluid is same right so we say solute will be added plus water will be added to extracellular fluid now do you think there will be any change in osmolarity of extracellular fluid no so step number one is that osmolarity will remain same osmolarity will remain the same it will not change is that right but volume is added is volume added or not so extracellular fluid volume will expand so osmolarity will remain same but extracellular fluid volume will be expanded because osmolarity remain the same in the extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid will there be any fluid shift no because when we have added isosmolar saline solution volume of the extracellular fluid will expand but osmolarity of the extracellular fluid will not change so this bar will remain at its the same position but volume will expand and because osmolarity is still even after the infusion osmolarity of extracellular fluid remains 300 so there is no fluid shift at all so the new situation will be that we will say that intracellular fluid osmolarity and extracellular fluid osmolarity remain same intracellular fluid volume does not change but extracellular fluid volume changes am i clear during this so this is you will write down step by step step number one what was the change addition of addition of yes isotonic solution to extra cellular fluid this point number one this will lead to extra cellular fluid volume expansion number three no change in yes extra cellular fluid osmolarity so no fluid shift yes please fluid shift in between which two compartment no fluid shift 
in between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid compartments. Is that right? Point number five. This is now you have to be careful about this point. When extracellular fluid volume will increase, what will happen to hematocrit? Now you have to tell me first what is hematocrit? Hematocrit. Hematocrit is, yes, who will explain it? Hematocrit is the volume of, listen, hematocrit is the volume of the blood occupied by red blood cell. For example, look, this is blood, right? Suppose this is one liter blood, all this is one liter blood. Now, how much percentage of this blood is occupied by, by volume of red blood cells? Suppose these are red blood cells, these red blood cells settle down, right? Let's suppose out of one liter, one liter is 1000 ml, out of 1000 ml blood, 400 ml is the volume of red blood cells, remaining is plasma. So what will say hematocrit is 400, rather actually it is in percentage, so it is 0.4. So what is a hematocrit? Hematocrit is the percentage of, percentage of blood volume, right, which is occupied by red blood cells, is that right? So let's suppose here you can say out of 1 liter, if we measure in liter, it is 0.4 liter. So hematocrit is 0.4. But if your half of your blood volume is occupied by red blood cell, then hematocrit is 0.5. If you are very much anemic and 0.1 third of blood volume is occupied by RBCs, hematocrit is 0.33. Hematocrit depends on how hematocrit changes, now this is very important concept, how hematocrit changes. If your plasma volume become more, hematocrit will become less. If plasma volume will become less, hematocrit will become more. So it means whenever excess cell of fluid volume will change, hematocrit may change. So hematocrit depends on number one, yes, extracellular fluid, what? Volume. Plus it also depends on volume of red blood cells. Listen now carefully. I will draw a diagram again to show you some hematocrit changes. This is a container with your blood. Your blood is up to here, right? This is suppose normal situation. And this much is suppose occupied by RBCs. This is by the RBCs, right? Now suppose here it, it is 40% of the total blood. 40% of the total blood is occupied by red blood cell mass or red blood cell volume. So we can say hematocrit is let's suppose 0.4. Is that right? Out of 1.4 is red blood cell mass. Now listen. How hematocrit can change? If you reduce, increase the volume, if you increase the volume, then hematocrit will become if you increase that extracellular fluid volume and plasma volume, hematocrit was 0.4 out of this situation. But if it is more, then it is not 0.4, it will become less. So whenever extracellular fluid volume increases, of course, then plasma volume also increases, hematocrit become less. But if extracellular fluid shrink, then plasma also, total blood volume also shrink. So whenever blood volume shrink reduces, to down, hematocrit will increase. Am I clear? No problem into this. That whenever blood volume increases and RBC volume remain the same, hematocrit will decrease. Whenever total blood volume decreases but RBC mass remain the same, hematocrit will increase. Another way to change hematocrit is keep the blood volume same. Keep the blood volume normal. But if RBCs swell up, they become larger, hematocrit will increase. And if blood call volume is same, but RBCs shrink down, hematocrit will 
डिक्रीज सो लेसन केयरफुली नॉर्मल पर्सन हैज हमेटोक्रेट ऑफ अबाउट पॉइंट फोर टू पॉइंट फाइव दैट फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर ब्लड वॉल्यूम इज ऑक्यूपाइड बाय रेड ब्लड सेल वॉल्यूम और मैस एम आई क्लियर वेन एवर एक्सेस वन वे टू चेंज द हमेटोक्रेट इज चेंज द एक्सट्रा सेलर फ्लूड वॉल्यूम अदर वे टू चेंज द हमेटोक्रेट इज आल्टर द टोटल रेड ब्लड सेल वॉल्यूम इज दैट राइट नो प्रॉब्लम ओके keeping this basic concept in your mind let's come back we were talking about when isotonic normal saline is added to a patient right we said extracellular volume will increase but osmolarity of extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid will remain same and there's no shift in between these two fluids and what will happen to hematocrit normal saline will increase the volume in extracellular fluid so blood volume will also increase and hematocrit will go down so hematocrit in this patient has less and point number 6 is about plasma proteins plasma proteins will become concentrated in this patient blood or diluted diluted because blood volume is increased so when you take 5 ml sample plasma protein concentration will be reduced and hematocrit will be also reduce you know why it is so important to know that if you are given two someone come to you and his body fluids are less and you give two liters of normal saline to him after some time you take blood sample and you find his rbc hematocrit is less don't think it is anemia it is dilutional situation are you understanding and even if you take blood sample his plasma protein concentration will be also less so you will not be fooled by this finding are you understanding me that there has been excess of volume expansion due to that hematocrit is apparently less and plasma protein concentration is less but amount of total rbc will be the same as it was previous it may not be anemia or it may be dilutional anemia is that right am i clear now we come to another person we have another okay when we have a patient with isotonic saline infusion we say patient has isosmotic volume expansion what is this patient he is having iso osmotic yes volume expansion that is extra cell volume has been expanded without any change in osmolarity is that right now we go to another situation and you have to use your own brains and figure out the situation let's suppose this is the normal situation for that person now this person has a trouble you see patient number 1 was a patient in which isotonic fluid was added this is a patient in which isotonic fluid is lost and we will compare both thing patient number 1 was where isotonic fluid was added to his body this is going to be a patient in which isotonic fluid has been lost when i say there is isotonic fluid loss it means out of the body fluid has gone out but the fluid which went out was having what osmolarity 300 milliosmol per liter so the fluid which went out that has what with solutes in the same ratio as in extracellular fluid now under what circumstances we lose isotonic fluid out of the body under what circumstances we can lose the water and solute both classical situation is yeah oh my god he is saying sweating my friend in sweating we lose water more than the solute so this sweating is not this situation i am talking about a clinical situation in which you lose the fluid out of the body along with the solute in as iso osmolar fluid loss right and this iso iso osmolar fluid loss is classically in diarrhea and vomiting you know when there is diarrhea you lose the fluid with solute and when you vomit out you lose the fluid with solute so let's suppose your patient has your patient has diarrhea explosive diarrhea or he has 
vomiting or both situation patient has diarrhea or vomiting he is losing the fluid with solute is that right or another isotonic loss is that your kidney is making urine listen kidney is making urine and urine osmolarity is the urine osmolarity is the same as blood osmolarity it means kidney is making isotonic urine remember kidney has capability to concentrate urine urine or dilute urine when i say kidney is concentrating urine it means you are passing the urine which is hyper osmolar than your blood and if i say kidney is diluting urine it means kidney is passing urine which has less osmolarity than blood but if i say or if i say kidney is making you are having the urine which is hypertonic it means kidney is concentrating the urine if i as compared to the blood and if i say you are passing hypotonic urine it means you are passing diluted urine kidney is diluting the urine and if i say you are having the urine or your patient is passing lot of urine for many hours and osmolarity of the urine is same as your blood he is passing iso osmolar urine or he is passing iso tonic urine let's suppose this is iso tonic urine if your patient is passing out isotonic urine it means you are losing the fluid out of the body with the same amount of solute concentration of solute as it is in extracellular fluid so when you are vomiting or when you have diarrhea or when you are passing isotonic urine right you are having isotonic fluid losses even in hemorrhage if someone get a road roadside accident he loses half liter of the blood so in the blood he is losing the volume with the same 300 milli of small fluid is that right so all what are the conditions in which you can have iso tonic fluid loss yes you can tell me about vomiting yes diarrhea yes iso tonic urine and what uh, what was that hemorrhage bleeding or hemorrhage all these conditions you are losing isotonic fluid out of the body when this fluid is isotonic fluid is loss from extracellular compartment you know fluid does not come directly out of cell fluid which is lost usually in vomiting actually these are the gastric secretions which are coming into git right in the same way in diarrhea there are lot of body secretions and content of the gi which, which are lost into urine uh, sorry in the uh, fecal matter right now so actually when there is vomiting or diarrhea or urine isotonic urine or there is bleeding the fluid is primarily coming from extracellular compartment when this fluid is lost volume of the fluid will increase or decrease so from here we'll talk about volume will decrease so it should become like volume is decreased right extra cellular volume is decreased right what will happen to the osmolarity of the extra cellular fluid no change it is just like that you have 5 liter lemonade lemonade and you bring 1 liter out do you think remaining osmolarity will change no you are not understanding okay if you make some salty water 5 liter salty water you bring 1 liter out of that the remaining water will remain same salty or more or less same this is so simple that when isotonic fluids come out they are bringing the solvent and solute in the same ratio ratio out as it was originally present so remaining fluid will have the same osmolarity so osmolarity in the extracellular fluid will remain the same as intracellular fluid right so do you think osmolarity will change here no so extracellular fluid volume will become less but extracellular fluid osmolarity will not change and when extracellular fluid osmolarity will not change will there be any fluid shifts in between no so what will happen intracellular fluid will remain the same intracellular fluid volume and intracellular fluid volume and osmolarity remain the same 
but extracellular fluid volume will become less and osmolality will remain same. So there is extracellular fluid contraction or expansion? Contraction. So this is a situation and this volume contraction is without any change in osmolarity. So we will say there is isoosmotic volume contraction. What is this? Isoosmotic yes volume contraction. Now I will make it rapidly and you have to tell me. If this is a patient, these are two patients and in this person, now listen carefully, in this person, this is a change and in second person, this is a change. A patient and patient number one and patient number two. In both cases, osmolality has not been changed. This is isotonic, isosmotic, this is also isosmotic, but here volume has been expanded and here volume has shrunken. So th what will be this? Isosmotic volume expansion, isosmotic volume contraction. Is that right? Remove it. Look at and review this. In this case, this is isosmotic but volume expansion. Here is still isosmotic but volume contraction. So whenever you add isotonic fluid to the body, body will have isosmotic volume expansion. Whenever you remove isotonic fluid out of the body, there will be isosmotic volume contraction. Is it difficult? Easy. Should we move to the next example? Okay. Right. Now we will come to another situation. This time we will add or remove, yes, salt out of the body. Let me tell you one thing. In this situation, we were adding salt and water, both. Here we were removing salt and water, both. Is that right? Or we can say here we were adding solute and solvent, both. Here we were removing solute and solvent, both. Now we'll take two more patient example, patient number three and patient number four. In patient number three, we will add mainly salt. And in patient number four, we will mainly remove salt out of the body. We'll see what happens. Right now we go to the patient number three and patient number three suppose this is the situation here normal right you understand it so well now this is the normal situation of course what is here blood. But before really I go to 3, we did not talk about here about RBCs, did we? What happened to RBCs? When there is isosmotic volume contraction, so blood volume become less and whenever blood volume become less, hematocrit will go up. But RBCs will not shrink or swell because osmolarity is not changed. So in this case, we should also discuss Okay, let's come, let's come back to this. What was happening? There was addition of, addition, uh, loss of, sorry. There was loss of, loss of isotonic solution from the body. That will lead to volume contraction in an extra cellular fluid. And no osmolarity change. No fluid, yes, shift. But because, because there is increased, because there is decreased extra cellular volume, so hematocrit will increased and RBCs will swell or not? RBC, no swelling, no swelling, no shrinkage because osmolarity is not changing, right? And plasma protein will get, plasma protein will get constant. Rated. Am I clear? This is the word isoosmotic or isomotic? This is isoosmotic, but it is written like this, right? Isoosmotic. Yeah. Isoosmotic, right? 
So, any question about these two situations? There is no? Now we come to the next situation. Let me repeat again. In patient number 1 and 2, we have added, here we have added isosmotic fluid, here we have added, removed isosmotic fluid out of the body. In this case, we added the water with solute. Here we removed water with solute. Now we come to third patient. In third patient, what we do, now listen carefully, in third patient, what we are going to do, okay, remove this situation. What we are going to do, that we add salt, sodium chloride more to the body as compared to the water. What are these situations? For example, if we give you salty potato chips, you eat lot of salty potato chips or I give you hypertonic fluid. You understand Hyperton hypertonic fluid? I'm giving from intravenously fluid which has osmolarity more than 300. Such fluid may be saline when there is hyperosmolar saline solution or there may be fluid with mannitol. Mannitol are also special particle we add to the fluid and make the fluid more or smaller than 300. So we are giving hyperosmolar mannitol or we are giving hyperosmolar saline or we, you are eating lot of salty, hypersalted potato chips or somehow I don't know for some reason you have taken the tablets of sodium chloride. Under all these circumstances you are adding solute more than the solvent to the body fluids. In all these conditions what you are adding more? Solute are more than the water. Is that right? So under these circumstances when hypertonic fluids are there or protect, so what happens? This area become hy hyperosmotic or hyposmotic? Hyperosmotic. The so sodium chloride concentration or mannitol concentration or whatever fluid you have added with lot of solutes, very very concentrated fluid, this become highly concentrated, extra cellular fluid. Under these circumstances, originally it was having 300 milliosmol and this will become maybe 360 milliosmol. Are you understanding? So what we have done? We have, patient as person has gone through some situation in which his extra cellular fluid has become hyper or smaller. Now what will happen? Osmolarity will go up. When osmolarity will go up, right, because mannitol cannot go here, sodium chloride cannot go here. So hyperosmolar solute part, solute particle will concentrate in extracellular fluid. Now osmolarity of extracellular fluid is more than intracellular. So what will happen? Fluid will shift from intracellular to extracellular compartment. So intracellular compartment will start shrinking, extracellular compartment will start expanding. So this will move to this side and this will move to that side. It is reducing its size and this is increasing its volume. Plus it, it is having high osmolarity, so osmolarity has gone up. Because extracellular fluid has high osmolarity, when fluid is shifting from intracellular side to extracellular side, fluid intracellularly also get concentrated. So intracellular osmolarity also goes up. So what will be the situation? Number one, both compartment have high osmolarity. Initial high osmolarity in extracellular fluid, which pull the water from intracellular to extracellular, right? And osmolarity in extracellular water is, yes, I will make it red. Osmolarity in extracellular fluid is high. This is one thing. Secondly, extracellular fluid has more volume because if you have given hypertonic fluid, some volume came with that. Plus, it has sucked the volume, it has taken the volume from intracellular. So it will become more volume. Is that right? Its volume will increase 
So it has increased its volume, it has also increased its osmolality. And this side has reduced its volume. But as it is losing the water there, its osmolality also become high. So it has reduced its volume. But eventually steady state will come and both of them have same what? Osmolarity. Is that right? So what has really happened? What has really happened if you want a single pointer that we can put it here? Things have gone into this direction. The whole thing has gone to that direction. That when we added too much solute here, right? Osmolality goes up and it pulled the water from this side. Same pointer you apply here. When you added isotonic fluid, osmolality did not go up. It remained the same, at the same, but volume went here. Is that right? Any problem in understanding this? Now we can write it, what really happened. In the point number one, the first change is addition of, what is addition in the body? Addition of more solute than water. That is addition of hyper, yes, or smaller fluid in the body. Is that right? This is the first change. Second change is, what is that? Extra cellular fluid osmolarity increase. What is the fluid shift? Intracellular fluid shift to extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid volume increase. And of course, intracellular fluid volume decrease. Is it difficult to understand? It's all logical. You put more solute here, it becomes hypercellular, hyper smaller. It pulls the water from here and it expands. And it becomes also hypercellular, hyper or smaller, sorry, by losing the water plus its volume shrink. Is that right? And what will happen to hematocrit? Hematocrit will decrease. Yes. Hematocrit will decrease because extracellular fluid volume is more. So RBC volume, relative volume of RBC will become less. So hematocrit will decrease due to due to increase extra cellular fluid volume plus hematocrit will decrease also because red blood cell will shrink because if there is a red blood cell here red blood cell had 300 osmolarity but because of too much solute here extra cellular osmolarity is high and fluid will move out of red blood cells so red blood cells will shrink and when red blood cells will shrink, the volume will become still more less. And when, are you understanding it? You are not understanding. What is happening? That because extracellular fluid is hyper or smaller, hyper, it is more osmolarity. So from the red blood cell, water will go out. Because red blood cell has the same osmolarity as other cells in the body. As fluid is shifting from all the cells to the extracellular environment, fluid also shift from RBC to extracellular environment. So RBCs will shrink. So two things happen and both things reduce the hematocrit. Number one, because extracellular volume has increased. So hematocrit become less. Number two, red blood cell volume is decreased because they shrink by losing the water. So hematocrit will decrease due to increase extracellular fluid volume plus hematocrit will decrease due to RBC shrinkage. Am I right? Another thing, what will happen to plasma proteins? Extracellular blood volume is, extracellular fluid volume is increased. So blood volume is increased, but do you think plasma protein are increasing? No. So what will happen to plasma proteins? Plasma protein concentration decrease. Right? Plasma protein concentration decreases. Now, this is a case of volume expansion or volume contraction. Of course, you will look on extracellular fluid, we will not talk about intracellular. So, it is a volume expansion. 
and what is this type of volume volume expansion this type of volume expansion after salty potatoes this volume expansion is yes hyper osmolar right so we'll call it hyper osmotic volume expansion what we'll call this situation hyper osmotic volume expansion now compare patient number 1 and patient number 3 attention please in patient number 3 there was iso osmotic volume expansion and here it is hyper osmotic volume expansion am i clear no problem into this so these are both cases of volume expansion is that right another thing when volume in the blood expand pressure in the blood vessel will be less or more so blood pressure also increases so in this patient arterial blood pressure increase in this patient what will happen there is isosmotic volume expansion the volume is expanded in extracellular fluid and when volume is expanded then blood volume is also more so blood volume in the same blood vessels when volume will become more blood pressure will go up you are not understanding look this is your circulatory system right this is the capacity of circulation system and this is the volume of circulatory system in this circulatory tube if you put more volume pressure on the tube will go up or down so it's like that what is this there are arteries there are capillaries there are veins and heart pumping this is a tube this is a tube system whenever volume in the tube will go up pressure will go up and whenever volume is less pressure will go down we don't need any big scientist to infer this you can use your own cerebral cortex to decide it right so blood pressure in this situation will go up and here also volume has expanded what will happen to blood pressure <laughs> blood pressure will go up arterial blood pressure will go up and when you are having isosmotic volume losses and vomiting and diarrhea and what is the other thing isotonic urine formation your volume is contracting when extra cell of fluid volume is contracting then blood volume also contract so what will happen to blood pressure arterial blood pressure will be down is that right okay if you have really understood i will go forward but before moving forward i will draw a diagram and now you have to i'm drawing the three diagrams and you have to tell me what type of expansion or contraction is going on okay my patient has undergone this alteration what is it isosmotic volume expansion another patient has undergone this situation what is this isosmotic volume contraction patient has undergone expansion what is this hyper osmotic volume expansion out of this situation patient number one two and three which patient has been given hypertonic solution three which patient has given isotonic solution which patient has diarrhea or vomiting that's great now we'll come to one more situation this is another patient patient number four right and in this patient number four there is very unusual situation let me explain here is your you know kidney has nephrons you know that or not the nephron tubes which make urine now let me tell you something actually there are some cells in distal part of the nephron and collecting tubule of the nephron the special cells these are called principal cells what are these cells called principal cells on these principal cells a hormone work which is called aldosterone there is a hormone aldosterone which work on the principal cell this hormone come from adrenal cortex this is produced by <coughs> adrenal 
adrenal gland cortex so adrenal gland cortex has a special area called zona glomerulosa this zona glomerulosa produces aldosterone aldosterone act on the which cells principal cells and when you know fluid filter normally what happen fluid is filtered from extracellular compartment it is passing through the nephron whatever is required by the body it is pulled back and whatever is required by the body tubular cells pull that thing back to the body and whatever is not required it is allowed to go into urine is that right so what we are doing that from our blood we make some filtrate fluid filter here and filtered fluid is passing through the nephron tube and whatever is needed by us nephron cells reabsorb that and whatever is not needed that is allowed to go into urine is that right now you know sodium and chloride is very important for us because sodium and chloride should be present in extracellular fluid in sufficient amount if sodium chloride is maintained in sufficient amount in extracellular fluid then extracellular fluid volume can be maintained you are clear normally what happen lot of sodium chloride is in this filtrate lot of sodium chloride goes down different part of the nephron reabsorb the sodium and chloride and bring it back to the body right and in the urine very small of sodium chloride is very small amount of sodium chloride is lost are you understanding me now if there is a disease in which adrenal cortex is destroyed there are two glands if both adrenal there is a right adrenal adrenal cortex and left you should know that this body has a right side and left side right okay just to remind you now there are two uh, these uh, adrenal glands if in both adrenal gland adrenal cortex is destroyed by some disease this disease may be tuberculosis or this disease may be amyloidosis or this disease may be hemochromatic there are many diseases or autoimmune diseases so due to any reason if both adrenal gland cortices are destroyed you will have extra aldosterone or severe deficiency of aldosterone severe deficiency of aldosterone and and some other hormones of the adrenal cortex so this situation is called adrenal <coughs> adrenal insufficiency in sufi cnc or in those condition where both adrenal gland cortices are destroyed we call it addison's disease what we call it addison's disease so in addison's disease adrenal glands cortices are not working and when adrenal gland cortices are not working there are severe deficiency of adrenal cortical hormones including deficiency of aldosterone when there is deficiency of aldosterone when there is no aldosterone actually under the influence of aldosterone principal cells reabsorb salt and reabsorb mainly sodium so it means aldosterone is a sodium retaining hormone that aldosterone is a hormone which goes to <coughs> nephron act on the principal cell and help the principal cell to reabsorb sodium to the body is that right now imagine if aldosterone is not there then can you recapture sodium from here no so more sodium will be lost into urine or less sodium is lost into urine if aldosterone is not there principal cells are not working well can they reabsorb sodium so where the sodium will go down down where into urine right so what happens that there is extra losses of sodium and chloride so urine will become what hypertonic right so there is salt and there is sodium chloride losses when there are heavy sodium chloride losses right but listen there is another hormone which is called adh what is it adh this reabsorb the water now water reabsorption is still good but sodium reabsorption is impaired so we are losing more solute as compared to the fluid so body is losing which thing solutes of the extracellular fluid main solute is sodium chloride when solutes are being lost out of it my friends 
what will happen it will become hyper smaller or hypo smaller hypo smaller right so you know it well that a smolarity will become less so this will become excess of fluid will become hypo smaller when it will become hypo smaller its osmolality from 300 will become to maybe 270 when excess of fluid is losing salt and uh, sodium and chloride its osmolarity will become less and when its osmolarity will become less it become hypo smaller but intracellular of fluid is 300 so water will move in which direction yes water will move from extracellular compartment to intracellular right so what will happen extracellular compartment will become expanded or shrunken so with low osmolality it will shrink extracellular and what will happen to intracellular compartment it will shrink or expand expand and its osmolality will come down due to it because it is gaining the fluid so extracellular fluid as showing expansion with hypo osmolarity so what this new steady state is showing the new steady state in a patient who is losing too much salt sodium and chloride or hypertonic solution out of the body right classically seen in addison's disease or adrenal insufficiency because the aldosterone is not there so in this case now write down the step step number one is right from here step number one is yes loss of sodium chloride from extracellular yes extracellular fluid so re reduce osmolarity of extracellular fluid that will result into what yes fluid shift from extracellular fluid to intracellular fluid fluid is shifting right extracellular fluid osmolarity is less plus extracellular fluid volume is less intracellular fluid osmolarity is less and volume of intracellular fluid is also that is more that is more is that right any question up to this no problem right and what will happen under these circumstances what will happen to hematocrit what will happen to rpcs volume has become less extracellular so hematocrit will go up so hematocrit will go up due to two reasons hematocrit is up why number one extracellular fluid is volume is reduced so hematocrit goes up number two look when extracellular fluid has low low smolarity rbc has 300 so fluid will shift to the rbcs as fluid is shifting from the extracellular compartment to intracellular compartment from the plasma also fluid shift to the intracellular area of the rbc so rbcs will swell up so when rbcs swell up that also increases when rbcs will swell up that will also increase yes hematocrit so we can say hematocrit is increased in this person why number one extracellular fluid has become less number two rbcs have swollen is that right and what will happen to blood pressure do you think in the vascular tube there vascular tube there is more fluid or less fluid so blood pressure will drop <coughs> am i right there is no problem into this okay uh, let's have a break So what we have learned up to now that when isotonic solutions are added to the body fluids there is isosmotic volume expansion the volume expansion without any change in osmolarity and when isosmotic fluids are removed from the body like vomiting diarrhea or isotonic urine formation or hemorrhage when isotonic fluids are lost from the body extracellular volume extracellular fluid volume constrict but without any change in osmolarity and this is called isosmotic volume contraction then in these two examples what we are doing here we are adding the solutes to the body there is net gain of solutes and there there is net loss of solutes how in this example we are giving the person 
हाइपरटोनिक इंट्रावीनस फ्लोइड और ही हैज बीन गिवन सोडियम क्लोराइड टेबलेट्स और साल्टी पोटैटो चिप्स सो लॉट ऑफ सोल्यूट्स आर एडेड टू द एक्स्ट्रा सेलो फ्लोइड एंड एक्स्ट्रा सेलो फ्लोइड इज गेटिंग हाइपरस्मोटिक एंड इट आल्सो पुल द वाटर फ्रॉम इंट्रा सेलर कंपार्टमेंट सो इट विल बिकम एक्सपेंडेड सो वील कॉल इट हाइपर ऑस्मोटिक वॉल्यूम एक्सपेंशन एंड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन वेयर देयर इज एड्रीनल कॉर्टिकल इनसफिशेंसी देयर इज डेफिशेंसी ऑफ एल्डो स्टीरोन एंड व्हेन देयर इज डेफिशेंसी ऑफ एल्डो स्टीरोन साल्ट एंड सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड कैन नॉट बी रिटेन्ड वेल सो देयर इज एक्सेसिव लॉसेस ऑफ सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड सो देयर इज अ नेट लॉस ऑफ सॉल्यूट फ्रॉम एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर फ्लूइड सो एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर फ्लूइड बिकम हाइपो or smaller and fluid shift from extracellular compartment to intracellular compartment and this must be called hypo or smaller volume contraction so we should write here there is hypo or smaller volume contraction right now it's so easy to understand isotonic fluid added isotonic fluid removed solutes added solutes removed what should be logically next step relatively water added to the body water removed is that right now we'll talk about those two conditions let's suppose we have another patient patient number 5 right and in this patient what's there that let's suppose we ask this person to drink Two one liter of water, right? When he is taking drinking one liter of tap water, it means water is entering in body more as compared to the solute. Tap water is hypoosmotic, right? So now we are adding to the body relatively yes water, right? Now when you are adding water, what are the circumstances? This may be done when someone drink lot of tap water. or someone is given half normal saline half normal saline mean that solution is hypotonic is that right or another situation in which this can occur that is syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion right what is this syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion you know adh hormone is normally produced uh, normally released by posterior pituitary gland but sometimes adh levels in the body may be produced in excessive amount inappropriately for example someone have a cancer of lung someone has a cancer in the lung and if cancer cells are producing too much adh we will say this is syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion because normally adh should not be secreted by cancer cells so if anyone has excessive amount of adh in his body what will happen adh is anti diuretic hormone so one way to add the water to the body is tap water other is that if your body has excessive amount of what is this adh anti diuretic hormone now what is the function of anti diuretic hormone normal function of anti diuretic hormone is that from the last part of the nephron it reabsorb water you uh, let's go to that diagram you know i told you here aldosterone mainly reabsorb sodium and chloride and your adh mainly reabsorb water in this addison's disease there were deficiency of aldosterone and there were waste of salt and now the condition which i'm talking about there is excessive amount of adh and when there is excessive amount of adh too much water is reabsorbed from last part of nephron from the collecting tubules is that right from the adh sensitive cells now when anti diuretic hormone level in your body is very high you are absorbing too much water from the nephron it means you are not losing enough water into urine right you are losing the solute but not water so this is equivalent to adding the water pure water towards your extracellular fluid so how you can add 
extra cellular fluid with the excessive water with less solute one way is drink lot of drink lot of tap water other way is patient who have high concentration of anti diuretic hormone they absorb too much water number 3 is give someone hypotonic solutions when you give hypotonic solution water amount is far more excess than the solute so under all these circumstances extracellular fluid osmolarity will go up or down when, yes when you are drinking too much water this is becoming diluted or concentrated diluted or if adh is absorbing too much water again it is becoming diluted or when you give hypotonic saline again you are making this area diluted so what will happen it's uh, it will become 270 osmolarity will drop when osmolarity in this area will drop what will be the movement of water yes when extra cellular fluid osmolarity will drop water will move from extra cellular fluid to intra cellular but listen now carefully what was the change number 1 osmol osmolarity of extra cellular fluid dropped so it came here is it right volume of extra cellular fluid was expanded volume of extra cellular fluid is expanded because water is coming in the form of hypotonic saline or water is coming from git or water is uh, inappropriately reabsorbed from nephron through ex extra amount of anti diuretic hormone so extra amount of water coming through extra cellular fluid number 1 volume expand number 2 because water is coming more and solutes are less so osmolality drop and when this area become hyposmolar what will happen that water will shift from where extra cellular fluid to intracellular fluid and intracellular fluid will also get diluted so extra intracellular fluid will get expanded plus it will also get diluted because it is receiving the water so what is happening extra cellular fluid yes extra cellular fluid expansion is there but extra cellular fluid expansion is there with hyposmolarity so this condition will be called hyposmolar what is this hyposmolar volume expansion hyposmolar volume expansion is that right any question up to this it's clear now what will be the other changes for example what will be the change in hematocrit what will be the change in hematocrit hematocrit now hematocrit depends on number 1 extra cellular fluid volume so when extra cellular fluid volume is more so hematocrit will become less hematocrit will become less but another thing what will happen to rbcs what will happen to rbcs swell so swelling of swollen rbcs and hematocrit goes up so actually there will be opposing effect on the hematocrit that because extra cellular fluid is hypo or smaller so rbcs will reabsorb rbcs will absorb the water so rbcs will swell up so volume of rbcs will increase but at the same time extra cellular fluid has also increased both of them increase in same ratio do you think hematocrit will alter no so there is no change in hematocrit let me repeat it again listen we said previously whenever extra cellular fluid increase hematocrit become less is that right but here even though extra cellular fluid is increasing but at the same time rbcs are swelling and rbc volume is also increasing so both of them increase in the same ratio so result is hematocrit remain normal am i clear but protein plasma protein concentration will be diluted less okay this was one condition now we come to another condition in which let's go to the next patient another patient right and in this patient patient number 6 let's suppose it's your friend and he has gone to arizona desert and somehow he is lost 
he is lost there and he doesn't have any water with him and he's not, he has not found any water source. So he is sweating and sweating and sweating right and not drinking water. So if you are sweating, if your friend is sweating so heavily, the example is sweating in desert without water, sweating in desert without water, right? Now when you are sweating, you are losing the fluid, there will be volume contraction, is that right? But in the sweating, water is lost more than the solute because human sweat is a hyposmolar. Human sweat is having osmolarity less than 300. So as he keep on sweating, water is being lost more than more than solute. This is your one friend. Other friend of you has high grade fever. You have another friend in your hometown and he has very high grade fever from many hours. When you have high grade fever, water is evaporating from your body and also from respiratory, you know, uh, people who have high grade fever, they bring the air out which is very humid and losing the water in that. But do you think they are losing as much solutes also? No. So person who has high grade fever he is also losing water relatively more than the solutes. And person who is sweating, he is also losing water more than the solutes. And another person which can lose water more than the solute is a person who has deficiency of ADH, antidiuretic hormone. So that situation is called diabetes insipidus. It is not diabetes mellitus, this is diabetes insipidus. In diabetes insipidus, what really happens that there can be two types of problem. Either there is no ADH, no ADH to work here, so water is not coming back. Because you know, antidiuretic hormone work on the last part of the nephron and reabsorb water. If there is no ADH, then water is lost into urine too much. Urine become hypotonic, hyposmotic. Too much water is lost, which should be reabsorbed, right? Or ADH is there, but last part of the nephrons are dysfunctional and they are not responding to ADH. Still, you are losing a lot of water. So, if there is no ADH, we call it cranial, cranial diabetes insipidus, cranial diabetes insipidus. And if ADH is there, but kidney nephrons are not responding to ADH, we call it nephrogenic, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So there are three conditions I am mentioning in which you are losing hypotonic water out of the body. When I say that you are losing hypotonic or hyposmolar water, it means water is low, lost far in excess than the solutes of the body. Classical example that excessive sweating without replacement of water, sweat is hypotonic. In the fever you lose the water with less solute and in diabetes insipidus you lose water with less solute. So body develop water deprivation, is that right? Now in this case when water is being lost from extracellular fluid, extracellular fluid will have volume expansion or contraction. So number one, volume will be in contraction to this side. Number two, it will become, extracellular fluid will become concentrated or diluted. Concentrated, so it will become hyper or smaller. So in the, all these condition, person who is sweating too much or having high grade fever for long time or having diabetes insipidus, he is losing excessive water out of the body. So extracellular fluid become hyposmolar, sorry, uh, it become hypovolemic with hyperosmolar because water is lost but solutes are not lost. Am I right? Now, normally its osmolality was 300, now it has become 340. When extracellular fluid become hyperosmolar, what will be the fluid shift from, yeah, what is this, intracellular to extracellular, right? And when this fluid shift will there, intracellular compartment will also become hypo 
volumic it will also shrink intracellular compartment will also shrink and when it is losing more water on the extracellular side it will become concentrated and hyper or smaller so this is a situation when someone is sweating too much or someone who is losing hypotonic urine or someone who is having high grade fever for long time initially go step by step step number one person loses lot of water from extracellular compartment then extracellular compartment fluid become hyper smaller so extracellular compartment when it become hypo smaller uh, hyper smaller sorry it's increasing hyper smaller then fluid shift from intracellular compartment to extracellular compartment so intracellular compartment also shrink is that right so extracellular compartment initially shrank and later on when hyperosmolarity was there in extracellular compartment intracellular compartment also shrink and become hyper or smaller is that right so in these patients there is yes hyper or smaller volume contraction so what we'll write here hyper yes or smaller yes volume contraction there is hyper or smaller volume contraction am i clear there is no problem up to this now in this situation what will happen to hematocrit hematocrit mean the volume of the blood which is occupied by rbcs actually apparently because extra extra cellular fluid compartment shrink so we think that hematocrit should increase no we should when whenever it constrict rbcs are there but extra cellular compartment shrink so we think apparently that hematocrit should go up but because fluid is hypercellular it pull the water out of rbcs and rbcs shrink is that right when rbcs shrink so hematocrit should go down so there are two things happening same time extra cellular fluid volume is shrinking as well as rbc is shrinking so both of them cancel each other and there is no change in hematocrit am i clear or i should write it there you are really clear i'm surprised right so in this case hematocrit will remain the same even though shrinkage of the volume should increase hematocrit but rbc is also shrink come here in this case when too much water was added to extra cellular fluid hematocrit should decrease because volume is expanded but rbc is also swell up so it remains stable but you come to these two situations here hematocrit what happened to hematocrit here what is this hyperosmotic volume expansion when hyperosmotic volume expansion is there volume expand a hematocrit should decrease hematocrit should decrease so hematocrit decreases because volume expands plus hematocrit also decreases because yes rbc is shrink is that right there is double decrease in hematocrit here hemato what will happen to hematocrit when volume shrink hematocrit should go up at the same time rbc is swell so both of them lead to increase hematocrit because you know fluid is hyposmolar and fluid will come out of uh, what is this because fluid is hyposmolar right so rbcs will absorb the water and they will swell up so here fluid is fluid is shrinking and rbcs are swelling so hematocrit will be yes high in this case let's come back here fluid volume increased but no change in the vol uh, volume of rbcs so hematocrit will decrease here fluid isotonic fluid contraction so fluid constrict but no change in the rbcs volume hematocrit will go up am i clear there is no problem in this if you have understood all of this i will just make a small test to you right now let's see we have really learned something or not right
look, this is the original situation. Right, I will make uh, multiple situations and we will see what is there. These are multiple different patients. In this case, the change, okay, I will make it blue color now. The change is, yeah, what is there? Isotonic volume expansion. And there is a change. There's isotonic volume contraction, okay. And there is a change. What is it? Hypertonic volume expansion. And there is, what is it? Hypertonic volume contraction. Hypotonic volume expansion. Okay. What is it? Hypertonic volume contraction. Okay, that's done. Now I will do another test with you. I will give you choices what's wrong there. This is a situation, right? And patient has, let's suppose, What, what is this condition you will recognize as? Hyper tonic volume contraction. This situation may result, I will give you choices. A, B, C, D, E. Okay, it is sweating or it is diarrhea. It is adrenal in sufficiency or it is sweating, diarrhea, adrenal insufficiency, fever, okay, rather than fever, we can say that uh, hyper tonic fluid infusion, infusion and here is adrenal insufficiency and there one more situation we can put like Tell me some pathological situation which may affect the volume. Hemorrhage. hemorrhage, okay. Hemorrhage, bleeding, right? Diarrhea and hemorrhage produce the same type of situation. Okay, we put these four. Out of these four, this is presenting which situation? There's a hypertonic volume contraction. Adrenal insufficiency is the wrong answer because in adrenal insufficiency, there will be reduction in the volume. Right, salt is lost, and that is hyposmolar as well. In adrenal insufficiency, you are losing the salt. So, you are losing the volume and you are losing the salt. So that will be hyposmolar, but this is hyperosmolar. Look, look just a minute. Volume has been reduced. Think clinically, volume has been reduced and it has become concentrated. So, from here, what is really lost? Water. So, this is a water losing condition. Hyposmolar fluid is lost. Where hyposmolar fluid loses? Sweating. Sweating. So here the answer is A for this situation. We'll make one more, just a practice. Okay, we've made another choice. A tap water drinking in large amount. Now, uh, what we can say that it is Hyposmolar situation and hypovolemic. Yeah, this is the situation. Now, think logically first. Volume has been reduced. Osmolality is also down. What does it mean? What is really lost out of the body? What is lost? Solutes are lost. Because too much solutes are lost, so it has gone down. And because solutes are less, the water shifted to this side. 
so this is solute wasting situation what is this solute wasting situation you remember on the kidney there was a hormone working and reabsorb solute ADH reabsorb water aldosterone deficiency so renal insufficiency am i right let's make another situation now look osmolality has become less and volume has been increased it means what is added to this water is added which is having less solute so what do you think tap water are you understanding me tap water has been added that is why volume has become more extracellularly and osmolarity has become less right now i will make one more situation for you so what is the answer here e and other like this and 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 is it possible no it can be like this but this we have already discussed there let me find some more situation okay i'm going to make another situation and you have to answer me rapidly volume has been increased without increase in osmolarity so what is the isotonic fluid has been added where is isotonic fluid there is sweating there is diarrhea there is oh my god we have to add one then f f is for f uh what we are adding isotonic fluid infusion so it means you can now see it does not fit into that we have to add one what has happened here some fluid is added so volume is increase volume is increase without increase in osmolality right i will make one more and if i say it is like this volume is removed out of the body along with the solutes because osmolality did not change right so this is volume as this is isotonic volume contraction so it means what what type of volume is lost isotonic fluid is lost out of the body in which situation isotonic fluid goes out diarrhea hemorrhage vomiting am i clear no problem up to this just enough for today class dismissed